Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you uh, all this morning. Dr. Robine, I want to speak a little bit this morning about where we are with, with Eielson Air Force Base. As you know, there has been a proposal that would move the F-16 uh, Aggressor Air Squadron from Eielson down south to, to Joint Base Elmendorf Richardson J. Bear. Um, this is, is more than a little bit troubling to the interior uh, uh, economy, to the folks up north there. Back in 2005, this same proposal was, was put uh, before the, the BRAC Commission, and the, the Commission then went ahead and rejected it. Uh, many up north feel that uh, the Air Force, since it was not able to get this proposal through the BRAC Commission, is simply trying to accomplish this through through different means. You've mentioned the two statutes that are on the books, uh, 2687 and there's also 993, which require the submission of the detailed information and then uh, congressional consultation before the service realigns outside of a, of a BRAC round. It seems to me that the Air Force is taking the position that it can avoid the intent of either of these two statutes by um, Rather than realigning uh, Eielson in, in one action, they, they simply cut the size of Eielson in half um, through a series of, of moves, none of which would trigger application of, of either of the two statutes, which, in my opinion, looks like it is, is um, going around the, the intent of the statute, failing to keep faith there. And I, the, I guess the question that I would have to you is, is first, whether or not you think that is what we're dealing with and, and whether or not we're honoring the, the intent of the statute. And then also, um, as the Air Force is, is looking at, uh, at this issue, whether it should defer from either taking any action um, to, implement the, uh, uh, to implement any realignment until it has considered or her complied with either of these two statutes or, or put the entire plan before Congress early on. I'm concerned that what it looks like is we're trying to break Eielson down in small pieces to, to put it in a situation where uh, it really doesn't stand on its own, that that warm base in a cold place just doesn't work out. Uh, can you speak to me directly about these two statutes and the implementation as they relate to Eielson? I <clears throat> you you've given me some some um, facts that I'm not familiar with, so I'm okay. hesitant to uh, talk about what you, what you describe as the Air Force going ahead and doing something that was rejected by the by the commission. So I, I can't reconcile the fact that they asked the commission f for approval to do do something. Uh, it's it sounds like though what they're doing is is within the law. I think what I can say is that when a, a base like Eielson uh, would if if we have if we do a BRAC analysis, we look at all bases equally. The fact that the Air Force is moving things out of Eielson would not affect the uh, Eielson's. We we would we would look at Eielson. Uh, right, but this is not a BRAC analysis value. at this point. Right. Is that no. correct? That, that's it. Sounds it sounds like and, they are doing what they can within within the law outside of outside of BRAC. Without then triggering again right. these these statutes. It, it sounds that um, way. You know, yeah. contained within the BRAC process, um, there are significant, um, I guess, economic resources that are made available to to the communities to to adapt right. to any changes, um, whether it's social or economic. But with the with this somewhat ad hoc realignment proposal that is is now out there on the table for Eielson, it doesn't bring any of that assistance to the communities. Is the Air Force looking at any aspect of that if, in fact, this proposal were to advance? I, I don't know. I, Is there yeah. somebody that yes. can I, I'll, back I'll, me on that? I'll take that for the, for the record. Senator, I apologize. I wonder Secretary if I might put your question and the answer in a broader context, okay. though. Uh, you know, the United States Congress passed the balance uh, the Budget Control Act last year required to be consistent whether we take $45 billion out of the budget in 13 alone, 259 over the five years. 
And what we did, I, I would I would take exception to the ad hoc statement, and uh, at least broadly, we weren't ad hoc. We tried to look across a range of missions. We came up with a new strategy. We made major changes in investment, tried, frankly, to minimize force structure changes, but made those that were consistent with that strategy. I know it's hard to make any force structure changes, but we had to. Uh, had we not done so, we would have ended up with an investment uh, account that were just not enough to sustain this military. As it was, we made major changes in investment, particularly military construction. So we were confronted with a major challenge budgetarily by the Congress. I think we met it as best we could, and, uh, and I, I don't think it was ad hoc. I think it was very much consistent with the strategy. Well, and I, I appreciate that um, most certainly, but I also recognize that with or without the Budget Control Act, we still have in place these statutes that require for a require a consultation process that require a submission of detailed information. What is proposed currently takes half, half of the, of the, of the population from Eielson, reducing the, uh, the, uh, the structure from 3,000 to about 1,500. So clearly triggering both of these statutes. And yet, we're not seeing any consultation. We're not getting the required information that we would have under those two statutes. So uh, again, I appreciate that the Budget Control Act puts us in a very difficult spot. Um, but I also recognize that there is an obligation for consultation. There is an obligation for, for that information. And I would appreciate, Dr. Rabine, if you can get me some information on the, the resources that might be av made available outside of the BRAC. Uh, one, one final point that uh, I, I'd like to bring up here is, is calling attention to the fact that on JBEAR, we currently have a situation where housing capacity is limited. We've got our soldiers that are living in, in trailers, so the, 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 uh, uh, the observation that you can take um, 1,500 from Eilson, move them down to, to J-Bear in a situation where we're already over capacity with housing causes me to question um, whether or not we, we have the ability not only to, to, to take them in, but how from a budgetary perspective, because that's what we're talking about here, how we allow and accommodate that. Also, if new hangars are going to be needed for the F-16s as we relocate them, where, where do we find the funds to not only provide for the housing, but to provide for, for the uh, hangars if we're looking at a 68% reduction in, in this FY13 MILCON program? So I throw that out to you. I know that the site survey team is going up there uh, within the next month, and I think we'll find out some of, these in, uh, some of this information. But it is more than a bit disconcerting to know that <clears throat> the proposals have been made Everything is on a very aggressive schedule to implement, and in fact, we simply don't have information available on some pretty, um, some pretty basic areas. So if you can get back to me with information, I would appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.